On this episode of Airtel Touching Lives, we look back at Sylvia's story from the last season and see how she's doing now. Sylvia getting the understanding will give us the feedback through Braille. The team then travels to Dubila in the Upper East, where shelter for the school is a major issue. all touching lives. Everyone carries in them the potential to transform life through their own actions and attitude. The simple action you take today would make a world of difference to somebody. I am Saddam Ofori and it's my pleasure to see you through yet another episode of Airtel Touching Lives. Before we get into it, however, here is a preview of Sylvia from our last season and how Airtel Touching Lives has made her life a lot easier. Madam. Do you know Sylvia? She is my student. I've been handling her for the past five years. When we go to school for the blind, I sit in the class as an interpreter to Sylvia whilst the teacher is teaching. So whatever the teacher teaches, I interpret to Sylvia. Then Sylvia getting the understanding will give us the feedback through Braille. We spoke to Sylvia's teacher about Sylvia's ambitions. I want her dream to be a teacher, to be materialized. She has the passion of teaching. In her church, she teaches Sunday school, children who are deaf. For her dreams to be realized, she needs a lot of support. Because with Sylvia, if your body is not touching her body, she doesn't get any information. Sylvia, do you have a boyfriend? I've known Sylvia for over 10 years and I've seen how determined she was to have an education and she makes her voice heard everywhere she goes. She's an advocate for persons with disabilities. She's an advocate for the deaf life. You know, when my colleague AC went to see Sylvia, she made a promise. Is there anything you want to tell me that I have not asked you? I have started from my dad girl as a crap. She does not go to school. She doesn't know everything to do. do. Her parents does not take advantage to cut off her hair. Every time they have her parents take her into the room and lock her hair. And her parents let for a week. I want to ask you if you can to first her to come to school and join us here. Touch your lives. The Touching Lives team tracked down Olivia and had her assist. Uh, with Olivia, I started with OAE, that is Auto Acoustic Emission Test. So when I did that, she failed. So I had to go on to do the middle air. When I did the middle air, 
with a tympanogram. I saw that the middle ear was okay, but that may not let her be able to talk or understand language as we are doing, but we can still fix a hearing aid that can let her get the environmental noise when wherever she finds herself. So that at least if she's around and a car blows a horn, and then she'll be alert to save her life. It turns out she does have some hearing and will be able to wear a hearing aid which will help her begin school. Touch your lives. Please let's give a round of applause to Sylvia, Trudy and Kafui who join us on Ultra Touch and Lives. Well, and when we last met on Air to Touch and Life Source, you talked about a friend in Accra uh, who hasn't got access to education, even though she's blind and deaf, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So Air to Touch and Life Source wants well, me to tell you that they will be giving her hearing aids so that at least she can be able to hear all the things, all the sounds around her and get a fair chance at school. What do you think about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very good work. <laughs> I want to ask Sylvia how she's been since we last met on this program. Very good. And the equipment that she got to assist her with learning, how's that helping her? Wonderful work. That's incredible. She says wonderful work. Truly. How's life been like since we last met? Oh, life has been better for us as educators of the deaf blind. Mm -hmm. And for Sylvia especially, she now has access to information and she's doing so well now. Wow. So life has been better. So she has now more access. Is she able to go online and you know, yes. read materials there? Also? Yes, she's on Facebook. So I've got to find out on Facebook. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes we're on Facebook. Yes. And Kafui, I mean, you've, got, you've had to go to school all over again because you sit through every class with uh, Sylvia. How's that been like for you ever since we got you the, we got Sylvia the machines? It has been a very remarkable improvement as far as teaching and learning is concerned. To me, it has been a, something that we couldn't even imagine it could happen. And what so, have you observed about her performance in class? Her performance has been so improving because formerly we were taking so much time in reading, explaining things to her. By this time around, it's so simple and it makes her acquire more knowledge as far as information is concerned through these gadgets. Sylvia, what can you do now that you couldn't do uh, before the equipment was given you by Airtel Touch and Lives? Computer. I have me to write my notes. It also helps me to communicate with my friends. It also helps me to learn. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Ethel, so much for your good support. Thank you. Well, Sylvia, Kafui, and Trudy, you are our great heroes. And um, we say thank you and all the best in life. Thank you, too. Well, after the break, we get into our main story. We'll be right back. Touch your life. Action 
feelings and emotions are contagious. Within us is the potential to transform lives through our actions and attitudes. Make your change with Airtel. Touch your life. AC is up in Dubela in the Upper East region. Let's see what she has for us. We all have a right to a good education. Thus, the improvement of access to knowledge cannot be overemphasized. It is for this reason that Airtel Touching Lives has come all the way to Dubila to see what efforts the community is making in their attempt to provide a good education for its people. The team travels to Dubila just outside Bogatanga and meets up with the Honorable Moses Abeoba. Greetings, Honorable. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. What do you do in the community? I am the assemblyman of this area. I live in this community. I was born and bred in this community. I am a native of this community. The people of Dubela are mainly farmers. It's hard work and unpredictable. They are at the mercy of the weather. We are mainly farmers, and the land is becoming infertile. So if you want to rely on that alone, it means time will come to get food to eat will be a problem. As of now, I don't farm. Currently, I'm teaching at Zorongo Senior High. So my profession is teaching. I've seen the need to also encourage the young ones. I, I want to be a role model. I want to encourage my younger ones that they can make it whilst in the village. I am from this place and I made it up to the university level. I'm telling them they can become president of Ghana whilst living here. The Honorable Dr. Dominic Ayene has nominated the Dubila School. Honorable Moses, can you please tell me about Dubila Primary? Dubila Primary started some years back. They were sitting under a tree near the borehole. Whenever they get to primary school, they have to go to a distance school like Bongbio which is about four kilometers away from the community, and they have to cross a river. At a point in time, we built a structure there, then that structure got demolished. So we pleaded until 2010, district assembly built this particular facility, three classroom block with an office and a store. Then we started the school uh, 2012. Infrastructural provision is very difficult. I've applied to assembly several times. They said, yes, we will attend to you when we get resources. Others are also waiting for the attorney. I cannot force them to provide all that I need. How does that make you feel? I am not happy about that. But what can I do? Four years ago, the Bogatanga Municipal Assembly constructed a three-classroom block for the Dubila community to serve as an initial infrastructure for basic education. Due to limited funds, the six-classroom block that was to be built later to ensure that at least children complete primary to JHS has not been made possible. For this reason, students after completing stage three are forced to study under nearby trees. The community itself has started a two-classroom math structure to salvage the situation. Why do you go to school at Bongo Bion? School Kabo Kalizu with my kinable. Get school and go and call my kinical and get my class like a vocal. Was it difficult to get to Bongo Bion school? Mara King, Mara King, Blamda Zam, Man King Tapa, Man Tarma, Man Lelem Napaida, Man Manitarma, Sam Sam Tan Neating Tenakang Yak in school. Tata Tani Laking school. While campaigning, the MP was out in the community and was moved by the challenges for the youth to gain an education. Dubla community lacked a school until the NDC MP for Bolgatanga interceded on behalf of the community and then the municipal assembly built three classroom blocks for them. It's been 
almost five years now since the, the three classroom blocks were built. And I was particularly struck by the fact that a little girl of maybe about 10 years of age had come to my, the campaign ground wearing school uniform, very tattered school uniform. And she approximately would have walked about five kilometers or more in order to be able to get an education. So I promised them that I will uh, make an effort to be able to build them a school. That is, that is how come that uh, we are here this morning. What challenges do the pupils face? Most of the time you, you notice that the pupils are, they are grossly underfed. I believe that the uh, school feeding program has not been extended, you know, to them. Then also you notice that uh, most of the parents are poor and the pupils don't have school uniforms. A lot of them also work barefooted. Um, also teachers, well-trained teachers for the school is a problem. Teaching and learning cannot go effectively under trees. There'll be rain, storms, and the sunshine. So it's not conducive for effective teaching and learning to take place. I have one head. I have one head. I have two ears. I have two ears. One nose, one mouth. One nose, one mouth. Two hands. This place, the classrooms are not enough for the children. The school don't have teaching learning materials. We don't have books. When it's raining, we have to rush into the, uh, this thing, the office. That place too is too small for us. We'll be crowded there. When we enter the office with the children, we can't even sit. They will be crying. Someone has stepped on my leg. Another one will be saying, this one has done me this. The whole place will be noisy, crying all over. They, they are not able to learn well. Who can read? in the community are basically doing nothing. Every day they just sit idly, playing games and all things. And that is the only thing they do. There's a lot of unemployment. So if they are educated, they'll be having something meaningful to do. Some, they will be well informed because, because people are not educated. They just take things as they are. They, they don't know their rights. They don't know their responsibilities in the community. So we hope that if we could get a school of our own, we will be able to encourage the youth to take pick up education and the community will improve, improve drastically. The community works together to make the best of their situation. My dreams for the school are big. Uh, first of all, I would want them to have uh, enough classrooms to be able to complete the entire program of basic education which means that they would have, you know, they should have additional six classroom blocks so that they can have primary to GSS. And then I would want the school to have its own library and possibly an ICT center because these days, without information technology, you know, your education is, uh, would, would I call it half-baked. And then uh, maybe in future, we could construct a community day school, secondary school for them. So, you know, you can see it's a very big dream and uh, I think that this is just you know, it start. If Airtel helps, how will it affect this community? It will impact tremendously on this particular community because providing a structure will be a panacea to most of our problems as far as education is concerned. Providing the structure will mean that our children will have an accommodation to stay in and teaching and learning can go on very well. And in that sense, I will be very, very grateful. Broadcast journalist Walter Cronkite once said that whatever the cost of our libraries, the price is cheap compared to that of an ignorant nation. Cost is of no value in the building of a society of well-educated individuals. And Etal is honored to be part of the development of education in Tubila to raise more learned individuals, such as Honorable Ayini. Etal Touching Lives returns in a short while. Don't go away. Touching
and emotions are contagious. Within us is the potential to transform lives through our actions and attitudes. Make your change with Airtel. Touch your lives. Moses and Jacob are with us today. Please put your hands together for them as they join us on Airtel Touch Your Lives. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well. Great, great. So, in your time, how many miles did you have to walk just to get to school? About five to six kilometers. As a child? Yeah. Every day? Yeah. Because just of, to get education? Yeah. Those, who have, those of us who have gone beyond secondary school are just less than 25 people. 25 people in the community. Out of nearly 4,000? <laughs> That's it. Okay. Was the situation the same uh, in your time also, Noble Moses? It was even worse. So how did you get your education? <laughs> I walked to Bongo Bio Primary. After primary school, I went to the uh, Zalurgu Junior High, which is almost eight kilometers. But Bongo Bio is around five, six kilometers away from the community. So until 2010, it was a ritual affair for anyone who wanted to go to school. That is. Any child. Yes. To do that trekking, that six kilometer road. Yes. On foot. Even they have to cross a river. Wow. Yes. Nonetheless, you, you ended up in the university and got yourself a university degree. Yes. It must have come at a terrible cost. Of course. Those who are able to progress from the primary three, they are still enduring the same this suffering we went through. We got from primary three, they have to go, move to uh, primary four. And do the same trekking. And do the same thing as at now. Well, for you to have made a, a degree, gotten a degree out of a university at, under such dire situations, I would say perhaps given the efforts, you would have had a PhD by now. And I'm most grateful that you didn't leave the community after you got your education, but you pretend there, you are living there, and you are still fighting for change. And it's for this reason that Airtel Touching Lives wants to help you. So Airtel Touching Lives is going to take up that three classroom block that you have. We are going to finish it and we'll also finish it. That is a guarantee to you. But at long last, we are getting a, a panacea to our problem. If it is not uh, fully completed, but uh, we are getting a panacea to help finish that block for us. And our greatest hope is that these children stop walking all these kilometers just to go and learn their A, B, C, Ds, one, two, three, four, fives. At least with this building, LT Touching Lives will be assured that the children will have a favorable, a more conducive environment to be able to study and they'll have a fair chance in life against all the other competitors across the country. How do you feel about this? I'll ask you, Honorable Moses. I'm very, very impressed, very, very delighted for the opportunity. Because it will help improve teaching and learning in the community and it will inspire a lot of children to go to school. And Jacob? Yeah, as Honorable said, it will help reduce some of our sufferings we've been running through district assembly regional level for them to help us we will be very grateful to a tail touching lives in this country a reality it will be a reality you can count on that but most of all we'd like to thank you for your commitment towards helping your community keep up with the good work and keep touching more lives never doubt that a group of thoughtful committed citizens can change the world thank you everyone for staying through Next week, we have another opportunity to learn and feel inspired by the great individuals in our communities. Goodbye. Touch your lives. Next week on Air Touch Touching Lives, we have a story from the very remote village of Kanjaga in the Upper East. Without the center, we can't understand. So sometimes we are even confused. We will then travel to the central region and visit a clinic that is doing incredible work in Cape Coast. Having a child like this, one child alone, is like having four children together. Touching lives, making a difference, show the world.